good afternoon. Um, so I'm going to do a wee bit of cooking with you today. Uh, you are getting a pack on Wednesday and this is just a wee idea of what you can use the ingredients for. So bear with me. So I've never actually done this kind of thing before. In your pack you will be getting a little bag of a phalli pasta. You will also be getting one large white Spanish onion, four fresh tomatoes, a variety of plum tomatoes and normal vine tomatoes and you will also be getting two cloves of garlic. So this is just a, a wee quick and easy pasta tomato dish. Um, take us about 10 minutes to do. So I'm going to talk you through it. Uh, for this you will need a chopping board, a reliable knife, preferably sharp, one pan of boiling water, colander for straining your pasta and a decent pan for frying your ingredients. So the first thing you should do is make sure your water is on boiling for your pasta as the pasta takes longer to cook than anything else. And to the water you should add a good lug of oil whether it be vegetable oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil any kind of oil is fine and you also to that need to add a good pinch of salt just so you're seasoning the pasta before it starts cooking the oil coats the pasta and any flour residue that comes out of the pasta will help create the sauce so that's the first thing you need to do so when your water's boiling make sure the water's boiling keep your hands to be clean always clean your hands as you go so when the water's boiling, take the bag of farfalle. As I say, this will probably do about two people um, and get it in. So that is the first thing you need to do when you're doing this dish. Um, then you come to the tomatoes. Now the tomatoes will be getting chopped. The best way to peel a tomato is put a score on the top. Just a wee score, it doesn't need to be big. And then take your knife, be careful, young people, if you are using knives and adults. Take the root out. So do that with all your tomatoes. A little score along the top and take the core out. I've already got two prepared here that I've done earlier. And then all you do is drop these in your pan of water for about 11 seconds. Have a bowl of cold water next to it, so this will help you take the skin off, it'll help peel them, it'll make it easier for chopping. So 10 seconds, maybe a bit longer depending on how firm the tomatoes are, but the tomatoes are quite ripe, so they won't take that long. This is what's known as blanching. I should do it. Refresh it in the cold water. Get your pasta a stir every so often as well. Makes things a bit easier. So let that water boil. As I say, the pasta will take about 7 to 8 minutes. Now what you need to do is drain the water off the tomatoes. And then the skin, I'll just peel off, like so. If the tomatoes are still a bit warm, doesn't matter. They don't need to be freezing cold for them to peel. They'll peel off just as is. It's a very quick and easy way to peel tomatoes. That way you're getting very little waste. And it's easier when it comes to chopping the tomatoes also. So as I say, the, the tomatoes are very ripe. So they may break up. If they do, that's cool. There's nothing, nothing lost in it. Um, if the skin doesn't peel away, just drop them back in for another five or 10 seconds but the skin should peel away relatively easily and it just makes life so much easier here's my knife for this part there we go as I say be careful when you are using knives a sharp knife 
is less likely to cut you than a blunt knife. Blunt knife will cause you more damage if your knives are blunt. So try and always keep your knife sharp. Um, sharp knives just far superior to blunt knives. Better end product. But be careful. I don't want anybody cutting fingers off. So put the trimmings in the bin. Give your hands a dry. Put this near the sink for draining your pasta. So with your tomatoes, all you want to do is chop them down. You need to tilt this. Sorry about this. I've never used any of these kind of things before, so please bear with me. So just a general chop, keep the seeds, seeds have got a lot of flavour, they add a little bit of texture to which is normally a soft dish. Remember these have got four tomatoes, so you'll have a lot of, lot of flavour there, because they're nice and ripe. So just chop them up, you don't need to be finely chopped because they will break down when you go to fry the other ingredients. Keep an eye on your pasta, at this point it will be boiling quite rapidly and you want the pasta to be which is known as al dente so it's, it's got a bit of bite to it, you don't want it raw otherwise it will get a sore stomach but you don't want it too soft either otherwise it just breaks down and even when it's finished boiling there will be a wee bit more cooking involved so you have got your tomatoes, you will be doing four. Put them in a bowl and keep them there. Voila. So, next thing you want to do, try and always clean your board. Oh, one thing I would stress, try and put a damp piece of paper or a damp cloth under your board stops it from slipping. So next thing, these are all getting a big onion. Very straightforward to peel an onion. Take the root off, take the top off, cut it in half, peel at least two layers away, and you'll be left with a nice onion like so. Now it's up to you. I did dice one half of the onion earlier. This time I'm just going to slice it. So watch your fingers when you are slicing. Slice it down as finely or as thick as you want. It's entirely up to you. This is just a suggestion. So that can go to the side. Next, your garlic. So you will be given two cloves of garlic. Very straightforward to prepare a clove of garlic. Palm in your hand. Break it up. Skin will come off. Cut. This wee root bit off, just like so, and then slice in half this way, and then just chop the garlic up however you want it. You want it quite rustic, you want it quite fine, it's entirely up to you to so say this is just a suggestion for a dish. You don't need to do this, this is just to give you a wee, wee idea on the simplicity of a wonderful spring pasta tomato salad. So what we'll do is we'll come and we'll check the pasta. Yeah, the pasta's still got about four minutes to go and then it'll be ready. So, now you need your big pan. Put your pan on a relatively high heat. Let it warm up, keeping an eye on your pasta. And then what you're doing, once the pan is hot enough, is you'll add a good lug of oil. Like I say, whether it's vegetable oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, olive oil, any kind of oil you've got in the house, doesn't matter. Um, it's just that you can, the more expensive the oil, the better the sauce will be. But, I say it's entirely at your discretion what you've got. So once the pan's hot, 
you need a good lug, good bit of oil because the oil forms part of the sauce. And then you want the oil to be hot. You don't want it to be too hot or else it will just burn all the ingredients. But you need it to be quite hot. So when the oil is at a decent temperature, put in the garlic. And let the garlic sit and heat up in the oil. So what will happen is the garlic will start weeping and it will start flavouring the oil. And it will give it that lovely garlic aroma. Now you don't want too much garlic. Garlic can overpower everything else, and because you're using fresh ingredients, you want the, the tomato to be the main part of the sauce. So, if I just bring this over here, you'll see it's just slightly frying. You don't want it to burn, because burnt garlic is incredibly butter. So again, just keep it on the move, that way it won't get a chance to catch too much. Next in, your onions. Now, you don't need to use the whole onion because it is quite a big onion. It's dependent on how much onion you actually like. If you like a lot of onion, put in a lot of onion. If you don't, don't. Again, you just want the onions to take on a wee bit of colour. You don't want them to be too brown or else it'll be somewhat bitter. And again, that can take away from the, the flavour and the sweetness of the tomatoes. So let that fry. This point you add a pinch of salt. Always season, lots of seasoning. Tomatoes love salt, they just love it. It brings out the flavour. The tomatoes actually weak with salt, so you end up with a beautiful tomato taste. So fry your onions until they're soft. Again, try and keep it on the move if you can. Get a wee cross over if need be. You can smell the garlic and onion coming through already. And then once that's fried down for about maybe two minutes, again without it burning, if it starts to burn, get the tomatoes straight in. And what will happen with the tomatoes, the tomatoes will still have a bit of bite to them, but you'll see them starting to break down, and that will be the base for the sauce. And I'll get a lovely fresh vibrant zing. Um, to this, if you do happen to have any dried herbs, I brought some dried basil, because fresh basil is very expensive. Fresh is better, but it's also expensive for what you get. You can use dry, but use it in a small quantity. You don't need to go mental with it because the smallest amount just makes the most difference. So, as you'll see, the tomatoes are starting to weep. And the seeds are slowly, slowly softening. Just get that wee bit texture. Tomatoes are still keeping their vibrant red colour. You don't want them to start discolouring. But that will start taking on the fresh taste of the tomatoes. Now, if you want, give it a little taste, check it for seasoning. You can add pepper to this. I choose not to add pepper because the pepper can be too bitter for the actual tomato. And I prefer just a wee bit of salt. Salt and tomato work really well together as this garlic and salt. So you're just cutting that down. Again, you don't want the tomatoes to go too far. You just want them to be soft. Now check the pasta. One minute on the pasta. Lovely jubbly. Now to this, I will add a little bit of flora. Butter's better. And it just gives it a bit more richness. You don't want the butter too much butter because it will overpower and it will become too rich. You just want a wee bit to give it that silky texture. The butter just infuses through and adds more flavour to it. Salted butter, unsalted flora, whatever you've got in your fridge. So this is just slightly starting to over stew. So what we do, we turn the heat down. Again you want to have that wee bit texture of some tomato but not too much. Now what we do with the pasta is you take it to your sink, be careful with this bit, maybe get a pair to do it. Drain the pasta, 
but you don't want to drain all the water. You still want it to be some water in it because that water contains the flour and the seasoning off the pasta. Straight into the tomato, give it a little toss over. Let it cook for maybe another minute or two. And then what I do is I'd add a wee bit of dry basil. You can add dry parsley if you've got some, you can add any herb you wish if you've got any. If you've got meat, you can add meat to it, this goes well with bacon. If you've got some ham, if you want to add some peppers, any other vegetable. This is just an idea. If you just want to do something else completely, then so be it. And that is that. Grab a plate. Spoon some on. Now if you've got a wee bit of grated cheese, if you've got some great cheese in the house, grate a wee bit of cheese over it. Beautiful. I had some parmesan in the house. I don't know if I've got a grater in here. No we don't. But you can grate some cheese over it. And that is it. Very simple. Very tasty. And that doesn't it take long to cook, so yeah. Job done. Enjoy.